Right. Um, this is not what we saw at the conference. So where are we? Like, what's happening? So um, what we showed last night was one of our main story missions, right? And that's, you know, obviously a big tie to, to our main story, what's happening with Peter. But a big part of being the fantasy of being Spider-Man is to swing around New York City. And um, we're going to deliver that big time. You know, <laughs> we create our biggest open world we've ever made. And in between our missions, you, our main missions, you can do a bunch of different open world activities, uh, crimes, um, collectibles, uh, quests, everything, and really fulfill that Spider-Man experience. Wow. Yeah. How do you handle that transition between huge open world traversal, which is so crucial to the Spider-Man experience, and it's on a massive scale, but then transitioning from that into the combat, which is quite focused and close. Like, what challenges do you have to overcome in that transition there? It's really hard. Yeah. Um, I'll let Ryan, because he's a lot smarter than me, answer it. Well, I don't know. It, it actually depends a lot on our animation team. Right. Like, our animation team does this so much for our transitions and missions, either getting into them or um, even just beats in the mission, right, between a combat setup and the next traversal challenge. So a lot of animation, a lot of design work goes into that, too, um, making some of our levels designed so that you can load into them smoothly. Spider-Man. I mean, this is what I'm here for. Oh. Look at that. Traversal is so, I mean, how did you approach this? Because this is, this is what everyone wants, isn't it? That experience of swinging through New York with Spider-Man. It's such an iconic and crucial facet of, of feeling like you're Spider-Man. Yeah, it was, it was the first thing we started working on. Immediately, once we got this project going, started working on Traversal. We knew it had to be physics-based. It had to start with webs attaching to buildings. So that was super, super important. Um, from there, it was just finding what felt right. Um, making sure that we were helping the player get around things and over things in a really fast and acrobatic way. Um, making sure that all the animations that connect you, again, are looking amazing. Um, and yeah, it just took a ton of work to find all the different places and, and things that you wanted to do. like. The fire escapes that Jacinda's team needed on, on the buildings, we didn't have those initially. Like, we didn't have those initially, right? It's just square buildings because it's a test level, right? But then once we looked at what does New York actually look like, there had to be fire escapes. Yeah, that was definitely one of the challenges that we had. That we wanted to make sure that it's like a superhero playground. Yeah. So you have to be able to traverse on the ceilings, like walls, the ground. Um, so, so, so if you guys play a demo, you should definitely check it out because every single uh, square foot of New York City is traversable. Fantastic. And how did you strike that balance between uh, first creating a New York that is authentic and looks like New York, but at the same time, I guess you've got to make it a place that is fun for Spider-Man to move around. So did you take any artistic liberties with certain places just to make them more fun to swing through? And <laughs> you know, for the most part, it's fairly accurate to what New York City would actually be. Um, we actually did make some buildings a little bit taller because you do need a certain amount of height to swing from a building. But because we actually have web attachments, like for example, you can actually swing through Central Park, um, the trees are a little bit higher and there's probably a lot more trees than you would expect. Um, but that's how we made um, the city a little bit more easy to traverse. Awesome. Yeah. What about bringing Spider-Man to life? Because even on the streets, the movements, we get a little bit of this, a little bit of a joke. Yeah, so um, we went... When we started working on this project, one thing we talked about was we wanted, you know, New York is a character for us, right? It's its own character, and part of that is the, the, how, light, how lively it is. You know, we want to have a lot of cars, a lot of vehicles, a lot of people, but it'd be weird if he just didn't interact with them. So, you know, he can, you know, instead of punching them, he'll, like, salute or wave, and then some characters you can actually interact with, like, we can do high fives, oh, really? we can take a little selfie with them and everything. So, so yeah, funny. I mean, we want to, we want it to be a... Up. Even though he swings a lot, there are going to be players who are going to go down the ground, and we want to have opportunities where they, you, can, you can interact with the NPCs. They'll also like run away if there's a crime nearby. Um, they'll sometimes clap and uh, be happy when you uh, succeed. Um, it's just one of those things that, like I said, New York was really important for us to get right, not only just the look and the feel, but also just the, how alive it is. Yeah. I, it, this is just fantastic. It's like, this is what everyone's what Rob hasn't stopped talking about. This is what I've always wanted. I just want to swing around. But now I'm like, maybe I just want to be on the ground. It's, uh, it was, it's been a, a dream project for a lot of us Insomniac. So um, to see it, I just want to grab a controller and play it. I want to Why, quite frankly. Yeah, I, it's just this, uh, this screen is pretty amazing. Yeah, I think it is being played uh, live at the moment. It's just, yeah. Yeah. I just wanted you guys to be able to tell us all about the game instead. 
Yeah, it's, um, I mean, and this is, like I said, you know, one thing about this is like, so uh, Adam just completed what we call a FISC base. Um, there's a bunch of these different uh, FISC um, installments out in the city. And as you complete these open world activities, you'll, you'll earn these tokens and you okay. can spend the tokens to customize your Spider-Man. We always want you to be the Spider-Man that you want to be. So Ooh. you can unlock new suits, new suit powers, suit mods, new gadgets, okay. and upgrade those along the way. So. Can we get some examples? Sure. So um, you see the uh, little icon in the top right-hand corner is what's called the Web Blossom. Yep. So that's actually a suit power that you can unlock. And do you remember in the, 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 um, the first combat room from Raph, he does that big twirly thing and the webs go everywhere? Yep. That's the Web Blossom. It's like a super move. Oh, cool. And each, most of the suits actually come with a, um, a suit power. And you actually can um, mix and match them. So say if you like you know, our Noir suit, but you want Web Blossom, you can take that and place it on there, or, you know, whatever the Iron Spider suit comes with, you can take that and place it on there, so. Can you change yeah. on the fly, or do you have to go to we have to go. You have to go to the yeah. menu to, to change it, but, um, and then that, and now, like, for example, he has his Web Shooter attached. You can upgrade the Web Shooter to have um, more, more shots, faster reload, and then same thing for a bunch of our gadgets. And, like, like, that's, look at that New York City. I think that's, it's like, I was like, behold, the power of the PS4. Yeah, I mean, it's right it there. I mean, <laughs> what was this? And the applause from the audience. Good job. That is incredible. Yeah, it's by far the biggest game yeah. we've ever made. And, uh, yeah, that's still a guilty pleasure of mine because I like to just climb to the highest buildings yeah. and just do a swan dive. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It feels awesome. Yeah, so like, yeah. they're actually playing. The, the demo is actually only a very small small portion of the playable area in this in the city. So um, we have multiple districts, and this is really basically one district with maybe a couple corners of others. But it's it's a massive world. And so, how do you bring a massive world to life with activities then? Because okay, swinging around is fun, but we want to do stuff in that world too. Brian, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, at, I'm sending well, all the hard ones to him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. You no, know, we have a lot of different activities that are uh, in the world. There's, I mean, in this demo, there's actually our research stations. Everything that comes from, everything comes with a story reason for it. Um, there's also our dynamic crime system. There's that web blossom we were talking about. Um, that you can see they're stuck in there now inside that little uh, coven. Um, so yeah, so the dynamic crime system is there all the time. Um, and so you actually earn the tokens uh, through that and then put those back in your upgrades. Um, and then as you go through the story, different other activities unlock across the world. Um, yeah, yeah that's kind of one of the cool things about the city is that it's constantly evolving, you know? Yeah. yeah. The citizens evolve, uh, the activities evolve as the story evolves. She's actually pointing out something. So another thing is actually, yeah. at certain points, they'll actually, the, the, uh, the, MP, the people in the world will actually point out things that you can do, like they point it to an activity in the world, so. And off you go. Off you go. Yeah. And Peter Parker has been Spider-Man for eight years. Yeah, this that's game. Right. What was behind the decision to make him a more experienced Spider-Man? So I think it, you know, we, when we were early on, we were talking about the story and the kind of story we wanted to tell. You know, we knew right away we didn't want to do an origin story because people told us pretty quickly they don't want origin stories. And, you know, coincidentally, the, the studio side was doing the younger Spider-Man, which is a great series. So we thought, what would be a good time in his life to explore? And I just remember back when I, after I graduated college, what life was like, it's like that, and you're finally an adult now. You're paying your own bills. You have a job for the first time. You're trying to make a name for yourself. So we just thought that would be a good opportunity to um, explore for Peter. And you know, as he meets his his mentor and stuff like that, um, I thought it'd be really cool. Awesome. And what can you tell us about? We saw a whole bunch of villains in their trailer yesterday. Um, yeah. Uh, the they villains. just kept coming. So what can you tell us about the villains we're going to be fighting? So um, back at E3 last year, we revealed Mr. Negative, and he plays a pretty big role um, in the game. And, you know, he's a relative newcomer, right? But we also, we, you know, it's a superhero game. We've got to have super villains. And, you know, back in, um, like I said, people were like, well, I hope we introduce one new villain. And I was like, that's not enough. <laughs> and uh, over, the, over the last eight years, he's locked up many villains. Rhino, Electro, Vulture, uh, Scorpion. And again, we've been saying, you know, not only is, he, is Peter going to be pushed more emotionally than ever before, but same physically. So it's just, when you have a Sinister Six, uh, we thought that would be a pretty good test for a 23-year-old Peter. And we saw, we saw someone mysterious arriving yeah. at the end of the trailer. Yeah, so I figured I'll just spoil it for everybody right now. <laughs> now. Forget about September 7th, just spoil it now. Now, well, 
It's, um, we're, we're, uh, there is a leader, and um, <laughs> that person was teased, and when you play the game on oh. September 7th, you'll figure out who it is. And how, how do you strike that balance between um, making a game for people who yeah. like the Spider-Man movies, maybe they're fans of the MCU, yeah. and then you've got the fans who have been reading the Spider-Man comics for years and years and years and years. What have you put in the game for them that they can explore in terms of lore? And you know, how do you strike that balance, making a Spider-Man game for everyone? Uh, do you guys want me to answer that? <laughs> Go for it, Brian. Okay. All right. Um, I think what makes the Marvel movies so popular is that they don't just, they're, they, they're, they're so accessible to people who aren't the hardest core fans, right? Um, so we work really hard with whether it's design, art, hey, character, UI, out. to make sure, and the story, to City. make sure that we're educating Slow people who Yuri Watsnabi is, um, even who Aunt May is, or Martin Lee, aka Mr. Negative. We want to make sure that whether it's actually in the game, whether you're playing a mission, or even you're going through our UI, that we educate you on who these people are, because we can't assume that everybody knows the characters like we do, right? Um, that's just unfair, because um, uh, we just, our job is to know who these characters are, right? But I think um, we want to make sure that it, is, it has a level of accessibility. I think everything we do, whether it's swinging, combat, um, um, upgrading his character, and then our story and our lore, there's a level of accessibility to it. We really want, we want as many people to play this as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what, you know, the comics and the movies do really, really well. Yeah, and I was gonna say too, like, um, in Marvel stories, like, first and foremost, all of the characters are human, yeah. right? Who just happen to have extraordinary things happen to them or happen to have extraordinary abilities. Um, and that's what we're telling here. We're telling a human story. And I think that um, players who even, if they're not Spider-Man fans, will find this story very relatable, so. I totally agree. Like, I think I, I mean, that was the biggest thing we said. As much as it's an awesome superhero fantasy, it has to be a human story. And I think that we want it to be a, a, a great, interesting story, even if you didn't have the superhero. That's just, you know, that's the layer we put on top. And it's, like I said, it's much of a Peter Parker story as it is a yeah. superhero, uh, as, as a Spider Man story. I think the other thing is that we worked really close with Marvel to find out the identity of those characters, like really what, what defines that character, and then work from that in our universe. That's yep. something Brian and uh, Bill Roseman and Marvel worked on really long. Yeah, I, the, the one thing to remember is this is not based on the movie or it's not based on a particular comic story. It's our own Spider-Man universe, and the, kind of the, the mantra was we want to respect the traditions of the franchise, but we also want to don't be afraid to mix things up. Yeah. So, um, like, for example, in our world, He's up up into this game, Wilson Fisk has been the big bad. Like it's all about taking down Wilson Fisk, and then once he's out, it opens the door to new threats. So, um, and the great thing working with Marvel is they've been so open to pretty much everything. And there's some really big things in the game that we haven't revealed yet that I think are going to surprise a lot of people. That they were like they went for that, and people like Bill and Eric and, and Mike, they've been um, unbelievable collaborators on this, along with Sony. And it's, it's quite amazing that you've been, you've been given the freedom to create your own Spider-Man universe. Can you remember, like, I don't know if you can pinpoint a specific moment, but the first day you guys worked on this game and you knew you were going to be creating your own Spider-Man universe, what, <laughs> oh. what were the first ideas that came into your head? I, I would say the first thing you do is you start to fanboy out originally. You're like, well, I want this character and he's going to do this and he's going to do that. And then the reality sets in that you have to make a Spider-Man game and you get freaked out to the point of like, there's so much, I mean, his character is beloved by so many people. And then you just break down what is, what's really important about the character. Um, there's so many people on the team that are so love the character. What are the common things we all love about him? And then it's just a really great collaboration between us, and, us Sony and Marvel. And, it, um, and it also at the same time, I think that one thing I feel like in the last year or so that's really made this game Feel really special is that it feels like an insomniac game right like yeah. it um i remember reading an article a little while back about like it was like the eight things we want to see from spider-man and one of them was a uh, i want to see insomniac dna part of it so like if you look at his suit powers his gadgets the humor it feels like an insomniac game so um i think it's one of the things i'm most proud of uh, working on this so i mean again it's up all thanks to the team and all the work they do i mean they they make it pretty special uh, let's talk a little bit about the combat since we're seeing it, because it's not just, it, it's the way he's using the environment as well. You know, we were ripping off car doors at one point, now we're pulling like uh, shelves down on people. It's incredibly, it's a really expansive fighting system. Yeah, I mean, right. making him an acrobatic improviser was one of the first sort of touchstones of the combat system. 
um, getting a lot of webs in there and using the environment were two key things. And it took us a while to get all the web action we could get, like the swing kick that Adam just did was something that we had to sort of discover along the way. Um, but the, we found out the more webs you have, the more unique Spider-Man can feel. Um, getting him really acrobatic, so um, the dodging and the leaping, and going into the air is another really important thing for Spider-Man that lets us I love that one, sorry, a little air finisher there. And there's our weapon wheel. Bring that weapon wheel up, when we finally got that in the game, it was like, wow, that's an insomniac. It feels like yeah, coming home insomniac. is an insomniac, you know? Yeah. He's seeing some of them in action now.